Shading shortcuts for webtoons. Hello, I'm Clit104 and I've been drawing webtoons for 3 years. This guide will share basic shading techniques I've learned and find really useful. I will be using scenes from my webtoon, Score on My Heart, as examples for this tutorial. Please keep in mind that everything I share is my own personal taste or preference, and there's always a different way to do things, or a different style to try. I'm always learning new things through the process of creating webtoons, so keep your mind open to new methods until you find what works best for you. Basic Fundamentals Let me give you a quick overview of the basics of shading and colour combinations for it. Knowing the basics can help you understand shading techniques which will make it easier for you to apply in your art. Here's a chart to help you understand the basics of shadows on the face. In the image, you can see where the light source is and how it lights the face up. It's important to note how certain areas are lit up according to the shape of the face. Here's a black and white version to show the highlights and shadows clearly, but this is just one example. It's better to look up lots of photos and references to further your understanding of how light and shadow work. Here's a chart of two color combination techniques that are frequently referred to when it comes to digital art. I've already pre-selected the colors on the side. To understand this method, you need to know how the color wheel works. Around the wheel, the colors are referred to as hues. In the box of the selected hue, each color is referred to as a value. The first combination is called single hue shading. It uses one hue with different values in that hue to do the shading. This combination tends to make your art more somber. The second combination is called warm and cold shading. It uses multiple hues to do the shading. Using warmer colors for areas in the light and cooler colors for areas in the shadow. Compared to the other combination, this combination makes the art more vibrant. These color combinations help you understand how colors can be used to create different perspectives or moods in your art. And either of these two methods will work. It's all up to preference. Setting up your layers. For this tutorial, the line art, base color and background are already done. As you will note, color coding the layers helps me easily distinguish what each layer holds. Let's focus on the blue layer that has the base colors for the characters. Create a layer above this layer, then clip mask it by clicking on the clip to layer below icon. What is happening here is that the base color layer defines the visible boundaries for layers clipped to it. Which basically means you can't color outside the line art or the already colored parts of your base layer. Next, in the layer tab, Go to layer mode and change normal to multiply. This makes any color on this layer blend to the layer below, creating the perfect shadow effect for shading. Shortcut 1. Single color shading. Now that you have set up your layers, we can start with shading. Pick a color and start shading on the clip layer to get a see-through effect. And remember to identify where the light hits. This method is handy if you just want to shade with a single color to save time. To shade specific spots, I use the auto select tool to select the area so I don't shade outside it. If the tool is not selecting the areas you want, you can change the settings in the tool property tab. The option you might want to tweak the most is the area scaling option. I recommend changing the color between a warm color such as red or a cold color such as blue, just so you can get an idea of how it looks. To change the color, first lock the layer by selecting the lock transparent pixel icon. Then use either the pen tool to color over it, or fill tool to change the color in one quick action. This tool automatically fills the entire selected layer and can be found on the shortcut bar.
You can see how it looks when you use cold shading on the female ash who has folded warm colors. And how it looks when using warm shading on the male, Leo, who has folded cold colors. Notice the difference when I change it around. Warm shading on warm colors and cold shading on cold colors. Both give a different effect. So which one do you prefer? A quick tip to blend the shading is to adjust the opacity. Shortcut 2. Gradient Shading Another quick shading method is using the gradient tool. This gives shading a gradation effect. Select the clip layer and make sure the layer is locked by clicking on the Lock Transparent Pixels icon. Next, select the gradient tool and find the tool property tab. Click on the drop down box by Where to Create and select Draw on Editing Layer. If you cannot find that option, click on the tool icon and the window will pop up. And you'll find the Way to Create option. Click on the lower box to show the eye icon. This allows the option to display on the Tool Property tab. This fills the gradient on the lock layer you've selected rather than creating its own layer. Once you have dragged the gradient tool over the shaded area, it'll fill the layer with the gradient color. You can see the slight changes that this adds to the overall color and mood of the scene. Play around with the gradient color setting and the tool itself to get the results you're happy with. Shortcut 3. Light Filters For this shortcut, I will be showing the layer modes I use to create an overall mood for a scene. Consider the mood you are trying to set when you are using these modes. And remember with any of these layer modes, you can turn down the opacity to make the filter blend with the background. I create a layer above the background layer and change it to screen mode. This mode makes colors lighter and brighter. I generally use it to push areas further into the background to create an atmospheric perspective. Note, atmospheric perspective is creating the illusion of depth in art. I also use the screen mode alongside the blur tool to enhance this effect. Next, I create a multiply layer above the screen layer to darken the colors below it, as mentioned in the basic fundamentals. For backgrounds, I use this mode to add shadows to where the characters are positioned in their environment. I will sometimes add shadows around the panel to add some depth to the scene and draw the viewer's attention to the center. The technique is also known as vignette. The next mode I use is color dodge. I add this layer mode above all the other layers in the panel I'm working on. This mode gives the layer a bright and vivid effect and is ideal for adding rays of light. The color choice is decided according to the environment and mood I want to set. Usually a color to contrast the overall environment. For example, warm and cold colors or complementary colors, which are colors on the opposite side of the wheel. Note, I also like to clip mask layers to show that they are created for the base layer or that they are connected. This helps me keep my layers organized. Bonus Shortcut My preferred color style is to avoid shading every panel, and instead to save any shading for the more impactful scenes. This helps simplify my process, and makes the more important scenes stand out from the rest of the comic. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you'll find it useful and be able to apply these methods to your own art.